Hello, everybody. This is Big Nate. I uh, just wanted to give a little heads up to you guys. It's Monday, the 13th of August, and the phone's going off. Oh, I'm a popular guy today, I guess. Anyway, just wanted to let you guys know I really appreciate all the suggestions and all the stuff that you guys have been uh, you know, commenting on my videos. Uh, I'm trying to get some sort of a format going. And, uh, you know, the wall behind me here, I'm going to be changing all this around. Um, I'm trying to get a green screen put in. Well, I'm just going to paint the wall, but I'm going to get a, a green wall put in behind me. I've got some 3D uh, editing software that I'm going to be doing. And it's all a work in progress, so just bear with me. And, you know, as I get more and more viewers, of course, I'll have more and more resources available to me to be able to produce more content. Um, it is a goal of mine to be able to produce at least uh, a show probably every other day or every day if I can. Um, obviously, you know, I've gotten some good responses with the stories and stuff that I've told of my own personal experiences. I'd like to hear from you guys on video responses. Uh, they're really easy to make. If you're on YouTube, you just basically go to upload and you use your camera and you leave a little message like this and then you upload it. And it doesn't take very long because you're actually recording directly into YouTube. And that way you don't have to wait for the upload. It's already there. Anyway. Um, look, I got my Minecraft account back up. Uh, I bought Fraps, so I'll be able to do some gaming uh, reviews, and uh, which is something I like to do on the side. Um, I'm also going to start a series where I start talking about different story ideas I have, different story arcs. And I may even bring my dad along, uh, who is a writer, and have him like read his books, like the first chapter of the book, and see whether or not you guys like it or not. And if you want more, and if you want more, you'll be able to go to a website and then purchase the book online uh, really easily. Because uh, I think we're going to do ebooks uh, for people. And then if they get even more popular, then maybe we'll do a run of like paperbacks or something. And if they get even better than that, then we'll do some hardbacks. But, you know, it's just, it's a work in progress. And, uh, you know, with my company, Emerald Hummingbird Media Productions, I'm kind of, like, really busy right now doing different things. I've got um, projects for uh, Blog Talk Radio that I'm doing with uh, Broadband TV. I'm also doing projects with uh, my own personal hosts and stuff that uh, are making – content on blog talk radio as well as youtube and we're getting ready to do a whole bunch of uh transformation stuff so um you know i i just want to encourage everybody to stay positive as as much as they can okay i know you're going to have your little dips of sadness but i found that at least in my life despite what is thrown at you if you stay positive and try to find out you know why it's happened uh, what you can do about it, and come up with a plan. You don't just want to react, because if you just react, you usually make more mistakes, and it ends up costing you more in the long run. But if you step back, look at yourself, figure out why this situation occurred, formulate a plan to solve it, and to make sure that it doesn't happen again. That usually is the best course of action on any regards, as long as you have time to do so. So it's not a matter of, oh, I just got to get this thing done, or you know, if someone says something to you, don't automatically just go off the off the handle. I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It's almost best to ignore them, and then if it's really eating you, to go back to them when you're calm and collective, and you have, you know, all of your resources in your mind that you can give to them. Now, if they fly off the handle, of course, you can end the conversation anytime you like. But my precedence in life right now is just trying to stay as positive as possible because it's so much easier to live when you're happy than when you're sad. And it's so much better to be more productive in your life when you're living a joyful and energetic life than one that's just like, oh, I just don't want to get you anything because I suck. Really? I don't even want to hang around people like that. Oh, my life's so hard. Oh, my God. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Dude, figure it out. Please? I mean, I like you, but when you get like this, I just want to strangle the fuck out of you. All right? It just, ugh. Now, 
One thing that I'm going to put up there right now that it, it just drives me nuts, and I see them every day, and I just want to go and hit them with my car, but I know that I can't because that's not what a rational person does, are these panhandlers with their signs that say, oh, help me, I need help. But they're there for, like, months. Like, I'm telling you, there are guys that have been on the same street corner for, like, four and five months at a time. And they just rotate between the, the different corners of that one intersection. And they sit there and they ask for money. Now, why do you think they get, you know, they get their signs and they stand there and ask for money for that long? Because people give them money. Stop feeding the bears. All right? Don't give these people a handout. Give them advice on where to find help. Give them advice on how to better their lives. All right? Give them an ambition life. Look, when I was homeless, I didn't stand on a street corner. I went out and looked for a job. All right? I didn't just go out there and look for a job. I made myself a job. All right? Using whatever resources I had. I had to make some money. I didn't have unemployment coming in. I couldn't support my family. I had to do something. So I bounced for like, you know, under the table. Or, you know, I would go and I would shovel dirt for whoever. You know, I was basically like one of those guys at the uh, Home Depot, at least. But at least I knew people that would pay me, you know, what I asked for to do work for them. And I just did those kind of side jobs until I was able to save up enough money to move to the next level of my, you know, experience and, and, and grow from that. But standing on the street corner to me is just, oh, God, it's like the worst sin in the world. I mean, I could not stand on a street corner with a sign unless I was actually doing it as employment. Like the guys that are advertising things that are going on, like, you know, the store's going out of business or a closeout sale or, you know, they're politically campaigning for somebody. But they're, at least they're getting paid to sit there on the street corner and give their advertisement out. But the guy that says, you know, homeless, vet, you know, need money, anything help, please, thanks, bye, you know, you know, I'll kiss your baby for a dollar, whatever. It just, it just drives me nuts that somebody who says that they're a vet would stoop that low to try to earn a living at doing nothing. Vets don't do that. I'm sorry. A real vet would never do that. A real vet would actually have resources available to them to better their lives and try to get out of the hole that they're in. All right. Not to say that there haven't been vets that have gone and done it, but I don't agree with the fact that if you're a veteran and you've lived through that much crap, why put yourself in a situation that's even crappier than the situation you were when you were in war? Why? It makes no sense to me. Go to the VA. Go to the uh, you know the Veterans Affairs Office and get some help. They have programs for you. All right. If if, if drinking's your problem. Stop drinking. If drugs are your problem, stop doing drugs. Oh, it's really hard. It's addictive. Look, if I was addicted to food as much as I am, you know, I would be like 1,200 pounds, right? I know I'm a big guy, but I'm not addicted to food. I don't have to, like, eat food all the time. If I really wanted to quit smoking, I probably could. I shouldn't be smoking, and I know better. But if I wanted to quit... I know I can do it. So, anyway, I'm going on a rant. You guys take it easy. I'll get to my next video as soon as I can. But thanks for being there. And, um, look, don't feed the bears. Just stop panhandlers, dead in tracks. Give them literature. Give them a Bible, for God's sakes. Give them something that will help them maybe become more productive pieces of society. Because those are the, I mean... You know, there was a joke we had when we were playing Fallout, okay? It was, you know, the hobo burgers that they had. It was feed the homeless to the hungry. Is that what we're headed for? I'm sorry, but I would not want to eat their wino-infested ass. There's no way. I don't care how much you age the beef, and, or I don't know if you'd call it beef. It'd be, you know, soil and green at that point. But... Yeah, feeding the homeless to feeding the the uh, the hungry to the homeless or the homeless the homeless to the hungry, basically it, it was a joke saying that you would eat yourself, all right. And this is what these people are doing. They're eating themselves mentally to the point to where they physically can't do anything. 
except sit on the street corner, play the Congos, and hope that at least I, you know I have respect for that guy. There's a guy out in front of a bar. He has a set of Congo drums. He puts his head on the ground and he plays the con Congo drums. Plays them like crap, but at least he's trying to earn money that way. He doesn't just have a sign that says "Please feed me." He's not looking for a handout. He's looking for a hand up, and that's the difference in the world. Anyway, peace out, everybody. Big Nate loves you, and uh, yeah, you know I've been there. Trust me, I've been there. All right, YouTube Nation, love you.